It could be any number of things that you have on your mind right now that are a wish list that you want to begin to develop, to bring into your life as a habit. It's worth digging in a little bit more so that you can actually move forward in the ways that you want to. Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. This is Love Your Work Life, episode 147. If you're like me, then you've probably had a problem with getting motivated to do something you want to do. And this is different from procrastination. Procrastination goes a little deeper. That's probably a topic for another podcast episode. What I'm talking about is something you want to do. Maybe it's a habit you used to have that just got off track a little bit for whatever reason. Maybe you got sick and you just got out of the habit of doing that thing. Stuff happens, right? Routines get disrupted. Circumstances come into our life. Our distractions happen so that we just get off course. And then we realize, wow, I really wish I was doing that again. But you don't do it. You have evidence that you can do it because you've done it before, but for some reason, you're not motivated. That's what I'm going to talk about today because we all have those things that we want to do, we must do, and for some reason, we don't feel like it, right? I know that's a thought that pops into my head. Uh, I don't feel like it today. Well, where does that come from and how can we solve it in a way that isn't beating ourselves up or being overly judgmental? Because that doesn't work either, right? If you don't follow through and then you beat yourself up later, well, that certainly isn't productive. That is not going to serve you in helping you get back on track. So where does this motivation come from? Well, the phrase, I don't feel like it, is a clue because motivation always comes from our emotions. Motivation happens because we are driven to taking inspired action because of how we feel. If you're feeling awful, you're feeling defeated, Unless you've got a ton of grit, and I have a whole podcast episode about grit, flow, and grace that you can listen to, but grit doesn't always work. Like forcing yourself into something is, well, first of all, it's not fun. And second of all, most of the time, it doesn't create a lasting result that way either. Um, Plus, you're talking about emotional exhaustion, all kinds of things that don't serve you. What you want to have happen is inspired action. Inspired action feels effortless, seamless, and it comes from an emotion. Think about all of the ways this could be affecting you right? Not having the proper emotion or your unique emotion that drives you to take action, right? Because some people might feel excited about something and that's the emotion that works for them. For me, this is going to be fun. If I think it's going to be fun and I feel the anticipation of fun, that helps me take action. Maybe for you, the emotion is feeling empowered, feeling confident, feeling ease. We're a unique species here. We're, humans are unique. 
And the feeling that motivates action for you might not be the feeling that motivates action for me. That's why it's so important to get hold of emotions as your guidance system so that you can start to say, oh, well, I'm feeling this way. What is that telling me? And specifically, what is that telling you about what you're thinking about that circumstance, about that activity? It could be any number of things that you have on your mind right now that are a wish list that you want to begin to develop, to bring into your life as a habit, it's worth digging in a little bit more so that you can actually move forward in the ways that you want to. And that's what I want to give you today. I want to give you something that is so easy and simple, yet profound in helping us give ourselves the grace and the space to get back into those habits, to do the things that for some reason we're not feeling like doing, even though we've done it before. And it's not that hard. And we actually maybe even enjoyed it when we were doing it before. Here's step one. Question the emotion. What is it that's making me feel like I don't want to do it? This is going to take you into some thoughts because our thoughts are always creating the emotion. So if the thought is, it's not going to work anyway, or I can do it tomorrow. (laughs) Those thoughts don't serve you, right? You want to understand where those thoughts are coming from, what those thoughts are, because we can change the thought. Changing our thoughts is our ultimate power. Most of us have a lot of thoughts that just run on autopilot. I totally get that. It takes effort and intention to identify our thoughts and be really strategic about choosing new thoughts. It's a never-ending journey. Let's admit that. So let's say you've identified the thought that isn't serving you and you're not sure where to go from there. Well, I'm going to give you three words that can change the game for you. I'm going to give you three words that will help open up the space for you to make the kind of progress that you want to make. Get back to the habits you want to get back to, to create a feeling that empowers you with regards to that habit, that pattern, that behavior that you want to create. Here are the three words. Wait for it. Why do I love these three words? Well, first of all, I love them because there's kind of two meanings going on at the same time. Wait for it is, first of all, suggesting patience. It's suggesting don't grind it out. Don't put so much pressure on yourself wait for it is an indication of patience and giving yourself permission to feel what you're going to feel without giving up on it. Isn't that interesting? Whatever it is, wait for it means it is still possible. It is still available to you. You know what it is, right? Wait for it doesn't mean you don't have any ideas. It means something to you. There is a definition of it. (laughs) I'm using air quotes. You haven't given up on it when you tell yourself, wait for it. Isn't that incredible? It's still out there. It is possible for you. You're just in wait for it mode. Doesn't that let some of the pressure off? I think it can. 
if you truly sit with those three words for a few minutes and just say, I'm waiting for it. The second reason I love this phrase, wait for it, is because we've all seen it somewhere, heard it somewhere, where someone says, wait for it. And then there's like, whatever, some big explosion or something. For some reason, I always associate wait for it with friends and with Ross when he's playing the keyboard. I don't even know if he actually says the words wait for it, but his expression, you know, before that last little explosion or whatever the sound is on his keyboard is that anticipation. Something is going to happen. Something is happening. That's the other side of wait for it. You've got the grace and the space, and yet the anticipation is still there. There's a certain inevitability associated with this phrase, wait for it. That's, I think, the biggest piece of it. The inevitability that it is happening, that it is going to happen, that it will happen. We don't wait for something that doesn't have any possibility of happening. We wait for things that are inevitable. It's like telling your little kiddos to, you know, wait for their birthday. They want something, wait for your birthday, wait for Christmas, wait for summer. Those things are inevitably going to happen. Those are moments in time. Wait for it can be the most empowering phrase that you plant into your brain because it's giving you the grace to let something flow naturally through a natural thought, emotion, and motivation. And wait for it is the anticipation that, oh yeah, this thing's happening. No doubt in my mind, it's inevitable. I challenge you this week to scan through the things that you've been wanting to do but have been putting off for some reason. Ask yourself the question, what could I be feeling or thinking that's keeping me from taking the action I want to take? And then give yourself the gift of wait for it. The side note to this is, what if this is the perfect moment? What if you are perfect at this very moment? Everything you need, want, desire to do is unfolding. And all you're doing is waiting for it. All right, my friends, I'll talk to you again soon. If you like listening to this podcast, I invite you to visit my website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you're going to find out everything you need to know about working with me on your career move, developing your leadership skills, as well as my courses, Job Search Field Guide and the Art of Stellar Interviews. I look forward to meeting you soon. Take care.